And I'm thankful today that his hand reached down right into the depths of the miry clay and lifted Randy Siebel up out of the pit, out of the stinking, rotten, and junk. Isn't it good? Woo! Hallelujah. Praise God. Mm, like, it, like Emily said earlier, like that woman at the well. I don't know about you, but I've been forgiven much. And I'll let you in on a little secret. So have you. <laughs> you that did nothing wrong in man's eyes. You hadn't murdered anybody. You didn't do drugs. You didn't drink. You don't cuss. You ain't cheated on your wife. But if you hadn't been born again, guess what? You're dead in your trespasses and sin. And when we come to the cross, when we come to Christ, we have been forgiven much. Amen? And that's why we are free to forgive people. Because we understand what grace has been meted out to us, has been measured out to us. And with the measure that you give, it's going to be given back to us. I want to propose something this morning and uh, try to get through on a decent time. So we're going to go to Beaumont this afternoon and I have a little celebration, Church on the Rock there in Beaumont, their 20th anniversary, and we're going to go down there and have a great time, service tonight, and some activities tomorrow with uh, some pastors in the area. And then on September the 25th, Sammy Walker's coming here, and uh, that afternoon, 3.30 to 5.30, we're having a reception here, celebrate our 25th, the church's 25th anniversary, hallelujah. That evening, Sammy Walker is going to preach uh, six six o'clock, and uh, looking forward to that. And I'm going to propose something today, and uh, you might agree, you might disagree. Now that I got your attention, <laughs> I believe God wants us to live our lives. Obviously, we need to forgive people. It's a commandment. Jesus set the example. The apostles, the disciples taught it. The Word teaches it. And then we're to obey its commandments. We've had the commandment. We have the example. So we are to forgive, not just um, for anybody and everyone. Now, I would propose today, as we look together in Luke chapter 17, we'll take some text from Luke 17 and others, Acts chapter 24, verse 16, and we'll go there in a little bit. But my message today is unoffendable. That we can live our lives, that we can choose to live our lives every day and not be offended. Wow. What would that look like? What would that do to us uh, individually as a people, as, as a person? What would it do to the church as a whole if we lived our lives And we chose not to be offended. Woo! Talk about freedom. Talk about joy. Talk about rest. Because much of our energy is exhausted in feelings towards other people because we've been offended. And that what we expend thinking about that, we waste when we could have been doing something productive and edifying. Amen? So I'm, I'm believing today, and I'm expecting, and I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, and can we live our lives unoffended? Luke 17, the first verse, Jesus said to his disciples, temptations to sin are sure to come. But woe to the one through whom they come. A lot after that, but we're going to stop there for for today and may do more later. Temptations to sin are sure to come. 
Here it is in some other translations. It's impossible, but that occasions of stumbling should come. Temptations to sin are sure to come. Things that make people fall into sin are bound to happen. Situations that cause people to lose their faith are certain to arise. It's impossible, but that offenses will come. Stumbling blocks will come. Lord, thank you for your word this morning. Feed us, teach us, change us by your spirit. Thank you for the power of your word today to pierce our hearts. God, we don't need man's understanding. We want the spirit of God. Things that we've learned, man's wisdom, replace it today, God. Saturate our spirit with your truth in Jesus' name. But one of the most deceptive, one of the most effective tools the enemy has is is offenses, isn't it? And if I ask you today, I'm sure everybody would raise their hand. I've been offended. And the word offended here literally means it's a scandal, a scandal, a trap stick. And technically, it's the little part in the trap that's tripped, if you will, that sets the trap off. It comes from a word that means bent. And so, of course, the traps they used to use were bent sticks. They would get a green stick, and they would bend it, and and it would, you know, Uh, uh, be released and pop back up and catch them in the net. And so a bent sapling, a snare, a trap, if you will. And the offense is what Satan puts in there as his tool, his weapon, to get us. It's bait, if you will. Have you ever read the book Bait of Satan? How many familiar with that? Very, very, very similar. And so Satan sets the trap, he baits the trap, and too often we take it. So, let's, let's don't take the bait. Amen? It's going to come. You're going to have opportunity. I used to read that verse and say, well, offense is going to come. I'm going to get offended. I mean, have you ever read it like that? Uh, I, everybody, we're all going to get offended. Which is, I'm not saying that's true. That's not what the Word says. It says opportunity. It's talking about opportunities will come. You will have opportunity. Some of you had opportunity today. There's probably maybe somebody who I didn't speak to this morning. <laughs> oh, not in here. But that's happened. It's happened. And let's talk about some of the little ways that we get offended. I mean, things that really are so minuscule. And I mean, oh, the pastor shouldn't speak to people. Amen? I mean, not be rude and... and, and, and Ignore people. That's not right. But many times, not many times, and personally and other people, line, you know, just the, the pastor didn't speak to somebody, where was so-and-so, she ain't been here. Now. Or he, <clears throat> don't pick on the women. <laughs> ah, ah, here's an opportunity right there. Well, they, you didn't speak to them, and, and they're, they're upset. You know, you saw them, but you didn't speak to them. That's an opportunity to get offended. Do I need to apologize to anybody today? No. <laughs> we laugh, but it's serious. These are the little things. You would be surprised at why people are divorced today. Why friendships, why relationships have been severed. Boy, gee, Satan will make a mountain out of a molehill. If you take the bait, I mean some little meaningless, really. And boy, we take that bait... And then it begins to seed. And then it begins to grow. And then it begins to produce the fruit of anger and and envy and strife and malice even, hatred even, rage, vengeance. There's people not... Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very same subject, different topic. There's people not in this church building today 
because they've been offended. There are people not in church anywhere today because they've been offended. There are people that have denied the faith today because they took the bait. And again, we could go on and on. Many, and, and especially relationships. Jesus, uh, Satan, did come to kill, steal, and destroy. And this is one of the primary ways, weapons, tools that he uses to get us in our lives destroyed. So what if? Hey, that's a, is that a radical thought to think, hey, I can live my life, and I can, when the opportunity presents itself, I can choose not to be offended. I want to submit to us today that not only should, can we, I think we should live our lives unoffended. Let's talk about it. Offense does produce the fruit of, of anger and hurt and jealousy, resentment, strife, and all of those ugly things. And if we, if we take that and we talk some of the offenses, we, we insult people. We, we attack people. Ah. Uh, Relationships, uh, people betray each other. I tell people that come to church, I like to, not everybody, but I always like to know why, why are you coming here? Too often they left a church offended. God didn't move them. God didn't send them here. How do I know that? Because God will never, never does want you to leave offended. He didn't want you offended in the first place. Because if you come here offended or you go to another church and you're offended, guess what? Mm -hmm. It happens many times and people come and get to talking and I'm, I'm talking in general at church and this one and others as well. And, oh, you know, this is great. And, boy, we just really love y'all. And, man, this is wonderful. Best worship. And, you know, the preaching, yeah, yeah. But, but, I mean, boy, this is a great place. Great place. Well, where you been? And, man, boy, this other place. Man, they are terrible. Man, we, been, we went up there. Man, they just, oh, man, start talking bad about them. And, man, they did this. And. They did this, and, I, and I'm, guess what? It may be days, it may be weeks, it may be months, but I can guarantee you that person is ripe to be offended. It's just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. And because the opportunity is going to come, I will give you an opportunity to be offended. I will. Because we're, we're human beings, and we all put our pants on and, and everything. There ain't no gods in here, right? right? Ain't nobody perfect in here. Right. We all need the grace of God. Yeah. And so there's going to be times I don't do the right thing. Mm -hmm. There's going to be times you don't do the right thing. We're all prone to make mistakes. That's the opportunity. But because of the grace of God, I can resist being offended. And we're going to talk about some things, so instead of being offended, what can I do? And how do I guard against that? And so it's very important if you leave. Well, nobody here is going to leave the church, so let's just move on. Let's just move on. But it's important. I, I, let me say it very soon. If, if you get offended here, do not leave offended. Amen? Don't leave offended. And there's people I, I know that, that it's the... Such a tool of the enemy. And you will always be offended. You will carry that seed. It will hurt you. It will literally destroy your fellowship with God. And it will, it will grow and it will be worse and worse and worse. So let's do what Paul did. Let's look in Acts chapter 24 and verse 16. <clears throat> Acts 24, 16. We can choose. Everybody say choose. 
It is a choice. That's, that's the point I want to make. Number one, it's a choice. Number one is the opportunity will be there time and time again. Number two, it's a choice to whether we take the bait or not. And keep in mind, what does it mean, offense? It's a temptation to sin. And so that right there tells you what? It's not something we ought to choose. Sin is a choice. Everybody in here has the choice whether you sin or not. Amen? The devil can't make you sin. Hello? The devil cannot make you. He'll tempt you. He'll lure you. He'll set the, the, the trap and put the bait in it. He'll, he'll use people. He'll use circumstances. Whatever it is, Satan wants you to sin. He wants to trip you up. He wants you to stumble. But it's your choice whether you take it or not. And one of the biggest lies of the enemy, lies of, of man even, is that we're just human beings and we're going to sin, we're going to sin, we're going to sin, we're going to sin. We just can't help it. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Amen? Say, Pastor Randy, am I, am I perfect? Pastor Randy, do you sin? Yes, I do. And there's no man without sin. But when I do, listen to me, it's, it hurts. I didn't, and when I make the wrong choice, in fact, the scripture that says, if any among you sin, be overtaken in a fault, see, and therein that itself implies that you were living, walking in the truth, and something tripped you up, overtaken, tripped up. It wasn't something you, whoo, set your heart on to do. See, that's the sin I'm thinking. None of us in here should have set our hearts on doing anything that doesn't honor God. Now, there's going to be times because of the enemy, and he's so sly and so subtle, and we may fall to his trickery sometimes and get tripped up. We're walking along, and there's something in our path. We didn't see it. We weren't looking for it. Amen? But we get tripped up by it, and then we're quick to repent. That's the sin of the believer. The believer should never have their heart set on doing wrong. And, and this is wrong, I know it is, but I'm just going to do it anyway, I just can't help it. No. That's a lie. You can't help it. Tell me the grace of God ain't bigger than your sin. Woo! Tell me the grace of God can't keep you pure. He can. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. We got to believe the word. The Bible says that, that, that sin shall not have dominion over you. And again, we're going to get tripped up, and it's, it's an exception in our life. Mm. Sin, I didn't say it's not part of our life, but it, it should be the exception and not the rule. Can I hear an amen this morning? Offenses will come. It's impossible for them not to come. But it's totally possible that we don't have to take the bait. And I believe we can choose not to be offended. I believe we should choose that. And what we're really doing is giving up our right to be offended. Some, some people think it's just a Christian. Well, I'm, I'm just be offended. In fact, some things uh, that people do, uh, you say, man, that just offends me. Be careful. Be careful. Maybe, it, maybe it's some sin in our society and people, boy, they just, that's offensive to me. I can't believe they do that. That offended me. You know what that can do? You take that bait, it'll keep you from really loving that person. I didn't say we agree with what they're doing. Ain't no way that we condone sin of any shape or form. But if we're not careful, we'll let people's sin become an offense to us. And I, it's, then you fall in it everywhere. It's going to be difficult for you not to really love that person. Well, you offended me. What does God say? He says, love them, right? He says, love them. He said, well, what about the righteous anger? What about that indignation against sin? Careful. I don't. I can't find in the word where it says man's anger, righteous anger. 
I'm not sure we can have righteous anger. I know God can because he's pure. See, if i am got righteous anger, then I'm judging that person. I'm saying I know what's in his heart. No. May you offend me? Yes. Does you? Oh, I better not. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm pointing at you, so don't take it personal. <laughs> Jim? No. <laughs> Who I want to pick up? No. He may do something that I, I, I totally disagree with, and that's okay. I'm not saying you got to agree, but it's, the, it's what we do. If we, the offense is what? A temptation to sin. And if we're not careful, if we're offended, we, we use that word when we really mean I disagree with that. And that's okay. But if we say, man, what the, I can't believe they've done that. That was so offended. It just offended me. You know, I, I have a... I have lunch with some guys most Thursdays, uh, people in the community and, and uh, businessmen, and, and uh, they come occasionally like to tell a dirty joke. Occasionally like to tell a dirty joke. I got a choice. They know I don't want to hear it. I mean, it's, it's well established <laughs> that I don't appreciate this, and I don't want to hear it. So sometimes they'll say, hey, hey, Pastor, uh, close your ears. <laughs> you know, close your ears. Or, hey, or they'll say, hey, you can't use this one on Sunday. <laughs> but if I get offended at them, see, then there becomes a division. There becomes an opportunity for me to sin. How? Huh? Judging them. Number one, and then maybe not wanting to be with them. Well, I just won't go. They offended me. Told a dirty joke. Hmm. Boy, I got the right to be angry. I'm telling you something. You don't have the right to be angry. Come on now. What right do you have to be angry? Because that person that sinned, where's your stone? There's another way we just sin. We judge them and we think, well, ah, and we're really setting ourselves up above them. Careful when we get offended. And we're there to be a light. And I tell you, darkness needs some light. Amen. So just sharing some, some thoughts with you. Uh, we don't have the right to be offended. And I think we need to forfeit our right to be angry. Now, back, back on this righteous anger. The God is character is as such, he can't make a mistake, right? We can. And so let's err on the side. Don't be judging them. You do not know the motives of their heart. The Bible says you don't know your own heart. Come on. So you cannot know absolutely the heart of another person. But when we get offended and we judge them and we get angry, that's really what we're saying. I know where they're coming from. I know their heart, this, that, and the other. And the truth is, you don't. But, the Scripture says, get rid of your bitterness, your hot tempers, your anger, your loud quarreling, cursing, and hatred. Now, this word here, anger, is more translated in indignation. It's a vengeance. It's a wrath. It's a... It's a violentness to it. You understand? It's a passionate against something where you're, where you're violent and it stirs up this vengeance. I'm going to get back. I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm angry. And how many of you are thinking about Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26? Oh, well, Pastor said, the word says be angry. You're telling us to give up our right to be Anger? Angry? But look at the word, Pastor. Yeah, let's look at the word. <laughs> I mean, I believe God's word does never contradict itself. Truth doesn't, isn't contradictory. Number one, this angry is a different word than the other angry. In the Greek, you get a dictionary, look it up. It's similar, but this doesn't stir, there's no vengeance implied. 
There's no hatred implied. There are feelings against something. Okay? But it's not this vindictive, abhorrence, wrath, and indignation. Okay? Get rid of that in the name of Jesus. But, if you're angry, don't sin. Don't allow this, what really means I'm exasperated. You know, and, and we get that way, don't we? Come on, we're human beings. We get put out sometimes, don't we? We get exasperated. But don't let that become the vindictive uh, vengeance and, and wrath and stirred up. and Then you've done, took the bait and sinned. Right, the message Bible. I was hoping nobody would bring that up. <laughs> and I, this is not, I, I just, moving right along. Huh? I've been offended right there. I don't think, that's just, now this is, I guess it's all personal, but I don't think we do well to be angry. You know, I just, that's a paraphrase I don't agree with. Okay? I don't think it's the best. I don't think that's well. Do we? Yes. But, moving right along. Oh, I done lost my slide. Maybe that's it. Well, I guess it's time to quit. No, I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> But, the right, in fact, the Scripture says, the anger of man does not accomplish the righteousness of God. Hello? And so I'm, 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 I'm asking us today, number one, know that you will have every opportunity to be stumbled, to be tempted to sin. Okay? You can choose. I'm not going to take the bait. I'm going to respond in another way. How can we respond when the opportunity to sin presents itself? How can we respond? Hmm. Thank you. We can pray. Paul said in Acts 24, I herein do exercise myself to be, uh, I'm going to have to read it, void of offense towards God and towards man. So we need to exercise, right? So everybody get up and stretch. No, no, not really, not really. But here's what you do. How many of you have been injured? Maybe you tried something. Uh, Maybe Ed, I'm surprised Ed didn't get injured on their trip. He climbed this big old wall. No. But before you do something like that, you really need to exercise, don't you? You really need to have, you need to be in shape. I'm not saying Ed's not in shape. He must be, because he climbed that big wall and, 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 and came down, and he didn't pull no muscle or nothing. And he's not offended. <laughs> Sir? Round. round, that's right. <laughs> he's in shape. This happens to be the round kind. Amen. 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 That's a good one. That's a good one. But to prevent, listen to me real quick, to prevent injury, you need to exercise. Okay? They, these athletes, boy, they exercise and they stretch. And, and that's why they're not very injury prone. They, they still get injured, though, don't they? But they're not as prone to get injured because they're in shape. They've exercised, they've stretched, and they've lifted, and, and they're prepared. And so what we do is what Paul says, I exercise myself. I endeavor. I train. I discipline myself. Be on guard against the temptation to sin. Be on guard. Exercise prevents injury. Spiritual exercise present, prevents injury. You know, that heart's a muscle. If you exercise that heart, I'm going to love this person. You know, this person's reacting. There's something going on there. God, show me where that's coming from. 
God, help me pray. God, give me discernment. I'm exercising my spiritual muscles, and I'm choosing, instead of grabbing that bait and getting offended, I'm turning my, 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 my thoughts away from myself, and I'm becoming oriented towards others. Because your offense and your anger is just a selfishness that's coming forth. That's what it is. That's what it is. And when we die to ourself, I'm telling you, you'll find that doesn't seem to bother me. Why doesn't that bother me? Well, it's kind of hard to bother a dead man, ain't it? Huh? It's kind of hard to bother a dead man. And I'm telling you, I've, I've seen, and I mentioned a few weeks ago, you know, offenses that, that I've taken over the years. And they have really what the devil intended for evil. God turned it around and just killed that flesh. Many times it's just an indication. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got some live flesh there. In the name of Jesus, I come to the altar and I crucify that flesh. Crucify. Put to death the works of the flesh. And so we exercise, number one, by prayer. By fasting, let me give you some scriptures. We may not read them today, but you can read them when you go home. Won't you do that? Prayer, always needed. Again, because you've got, you got to humble yourself. You've got, to, you've got to be gracious. And again, remember the scripture, with the measure that you meet or give, it's going to give back to you. That's why you better choose not to be angry. You better choose not to be angry. Because what are you doing? You're inviting anger. If you choose not to forgive, you're inviting unforgiveness. If you choose not to give grace to that person that's being ugly to you, and I'm not, again, we're not saying and condoning what they're doing. And there is a time, let me say this, that you can confront people. There is a, a confrontation many times that's necessary, but you don't have to be angry. So I'm not saying accept and just be a doormat and let everybody run over you and and just call your names and be ugly to you. No. Call them out on it. But why be angry? And your goal is to help them. Your goal is not you. Because you're dead. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. And so my goal is, Lord, the betterment of that other person. And I'm going to give grace because the measure that I give, hey, I'm going to need some grace maybe tomorrow, maybe today. No, I'm going to need some today. I could get in my car and drive four and a half hours with Elizabeth. I need some grace today. I need some grace today. Yes, he does too. We know the truth. And so we're going to exercise ourselves. The Bible says rather unto godliness, right? Not to take the bait, not to sin, not to stumble. And we exercise ourselves to be void of offense toward God. I don't want to have sin in my God. I want to have a good conscience. Amen? For the power of a good, clean conscience. That's why many people today, boy, they're so unrestful. They are so, they're so torn. Their lives are in chaos as they harbor unforgiveness. And they allow everybody just to offend them. And they take the bait. And they're, it's, a, it's a sad, sad life. And it's just full of ugliness in their life. They just almost look for ways to get offended. They think it's their right. Their Christian duty. That's a lie from the devil. It's our Christian duty to love our enemy. It's our Christian. So, number one, we pray always. We need humility, God. We need grace. That's what we want to give. We want to turn our attention not on ourselves but on other people. Fasting is necessary. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 6. This is the fast that I have chosen. To loose the bonds of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. To let the oppressed go free. And to break every yoke. I don't want that yoke on me. I don't want that yoke on them. This is the fast. Not necessarily to say, oh, I went 40 days without food. Yeehaw. Look at me. No, but the fast is spiritual warfare. The fast is to see change in me and see change in other people. 
But we pray, we fast, and we do 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. We reject thoughts that are sinful. When that temptation comes to sin, to be a stumbling block, maybe to have vengeance, maybe to have hatred, maybe to have envy, maybe have jealousy, whatever it comes, then we take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. That's not godly. I reject that. God, give me grace. I humble myself under your mighty hand, Lord. God, who am I to judge that other person? I reject those thoughts of vengeance. I reject it getting even. I reject being ugly. I reject the retaliating. I reject paying evil for evil. That's man's way. Let's do it God's way. Amen? And so we exercise by prayer, fasting, by rejecting those thoughts and taking them captive. And how about in Matthew 5, 5 44, we talked about this. Meaning we do good. We exercise. I'm exercising my muscle. Amen? Because I... I, I, I I don't want to get injured. I don't want to get offended. And so I'm going to exercise through prayer, through fasting, through rejecting those thoughts, and through blessing and doing good. Now, now this is not like, well, bless them, Lord. Oh, sorry, dude. God, if you see fit. God, you know what they did. You saw it. God, I can't believe they done that. I can't believe they said that, God. But Lord, um, just bless them. Uh, how about a little passion? Real quick, Psalms 35. Psalms 35. Here we go. I love this scripture. Psalms 35. Just, just a couple of verses. 13. And 14. Boy, David had a lot of opportunities to take the bait, didn't he? And he wasn't perfect, neither are we. And let me interject this real quick. Exercise is also necessary after you've been hurt. Therapy. We call it therapy. And so if we've been injured, then we got to, whoa, man, I got to repair. I got to restore. And so we, what do we do? We pray. You see, we exercise. We fast. We, we make sure that uh, that we have forgiven, and we release that hurt and let them go. Verse 13, but I, but I, they say, but I. One translation says, I think it's King David, but as for me, hey, we're talking to me, aren't we? But as for me, when they were sick, I wore sackcloth. I wish we could read about Above that, and, and he was certainly being ill-treated. He had every opportunity to fight back and have vengeance and pay back, buddy, pay back. But as for me, when they were sick, I wore sackcloth. I afflicted myself with fasting. I prayed with my head bowed on my chest. I went about as though I grieved for my friend or my brother. Or one translation says my mother. I prayed with, with, with compassion for that person, seriously wanting God to bless and be good to them. Whoa, you talk about freedom. Too many people are bound up in their hatred and animosity and ill feelings towards other people. Many, many people are. Talk to them every day. And they just harbor that in it in its there's nothing more freer than being unoffended. Whew. Just getting up, I'm not going to be offended. Go ahead. Give me your best shot. Just kidding. No. Don't tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. But seriously, we need to wake up every morning. Say, Hope, I'm going to face some opportunity today. There is going to be an offense hurled my way. But I'm going to make a choice not to take the bait. I went about as though I grieved for my friend or my brother. As one who laments his mother, I bow down in mourning. What do we do in response? How do we exercise to stay free of offense? We pray, don't we? We humble ourselves under the mighty hand. We realize, except for the grace of God, there go I. And we refrain from judging that person because you do not know their heart. 
No, you don't. That's why God's righteous anger is legitimate. He can be trusted with his anger. We can't. You cannot be trusted with your anger. And your anger will never accomplish the righteousness of God. That's the word. Man's anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. We don't have a right to be angry. We don't have a right even to be offended. Why? Because my life is crucified. It's dead and it's hidden with Christ in God. I'm not my own. And to be offended is really to be selfish. You hurt my feelings. You hurt my, you get the picture? Me. You're more concerned about yourself if you get offended than you are the other person. Let me remove you more if 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 you take the bait if you sin because you're gonna have feet. people are gonna say things you understand people are gonna the opportunity's gonna be there and then you say whoa I'm not going there give them grace humble myself under God receive His grace give His grace we pray we fast we reject those thoughts and we bless them. Sincerely pray for them, passionately wanting God to do good in their life. You want to be free? Be unoffended. It's a choice. Let's pray. God, thank you. God, thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for redeeming our lives. God, I pray as we think about this, Lord, that we will choose God's way, not man's way, not man's wisdom. God, things we've been taught, well, I have a right to be angry. I have a right. No. We have a responsibility to love and do good and bless, yea, even our enemies. Oh, God. Oh, God. The Bible says we're angry at somebody. We're guilty of what? Murder. I want to tell you this morning, it's a grave, serious thing to fall into this trap of being offended and getting angry. We can't afford to go there. And God doesn't pay too high a price. We don't have to go there. Amen? Stand with me.